This is a recording of Nectar in a Sieve by Kamala Markandeya. Chapter 29 The memories of that night are hard and bright within me like a diamond, and the fires that flash from it have strange powers. Some are blue and wrap me gently in their glow, or green and soothing like oxen eyes in the night. But there are others, yellow and red, that sear me with their intensity. When this happens, I call to the midst, and they come like clouds that cover the sun. But the fires themselves are always there. They will never be extinguished until my life itself is done. What do I remember? Every word, every detail. I remember walking along the wet, deserted street by the wall of the temple. I remember looking up for the flare that had ever burnt on the top of the temple, and it was quenched, and the black demons of fear came shrieking at my ear and would not be silenced. For all that I repeated like a mad woman, fire cannot burn in water. I saw the faces of men who were not there and of children from whom the life had been filched, and yet it was black night, blacker than black since the stars were hidden. They laid my husband on the paved floor, and I sank down beside him. Somebody brought a light, a hurricane lantern that burned steady in the stormy wind. Somebody else, water. His body was caked in mud, wet and dirty. I wiped him clean, took his head in my lap. The knot of people who had come so far with me melted away into the darkness, in ones and twos, when they saw how it was. Nathan's head kept twitching from side to side. He called to our sons and muttered words that I did not understand. The rays from the lantern fell on his wasted face and the tight yellowed skin, on the lips split with fever, on his limbs which were like a child's. Sometimes his breath came between his chattering teeth in gusts, rising above the rain and the winds that swished down the corridors. At other times I had to bend to listen. Hour after hour his body suffered. His mind had fled from the tormented flesh. Midnight approached. The time of in-between when it is neither day nor night, when nature seems to pause, to sigh in turn and prepare for another day. Midnight and, as always before, his paroxysms eased. The fits of shivering stopped. The stiff limbs fell limp and relaxed. In the calm stillness I saw him open his eyes. His hand came to my face, tender and searching, wiping away the unruly tears. You must not cry, dearest. What has to be, has to be. Hush, I said. Rest and grow better. I have only to stretch out my hand, he said, to feel the coldness of death. Would you hold me when my time is come? I am at peace. Do not grieve. If I grieve, I said, it is not for you, but for myself, beloved. For how shall I endure to live without you, who are my love and my life? You are not alone, he said. I live in my children, and was silent. And then I heard him murmur my name and bent down. Have we not been happy together? Always, my dearest, always. It is slipping away fast, he said. Rest with me a little. And so I laid my face on his, and for a while his breath fell soft and light as a rose petal on my cheek. Then he sighed as if in weariness and turned his face to me. And so his gentle spirit withdrew, and the light went out in his eyes.